if you, I know it's kind of crazy because this hour was affected with the bubbling yesterday, so I have some kids that are absent because of a field trip, and then I have some kids absent for the field trip today, and some people were gone for the bubbling, and so anyway, um, I am going to still go over these answers to the, um, the Hardy-Weinberg problems. Uh, it would be in your best interest. I'm going to let you stay in here if you were not here yesterday. Um, it would be in your best interest to try to pay attention and then just to try them on your own because um, it may make sense when I go over it, but it, um, when you're doing it on your own, it's a whole different story. So I would um, try them on your own. I also am going to upload and I have some other practice party weinberg problems as well um, with some answers that you can do for practice if you feel like you need some more um, extra practice. I'll upload that those in the answer keys as well. All right, because you do need to know how to solve these types of problems. So let's look at the squirrels. And so um, for those people who were not here, uh, the squirrel problem, um, there was a, I, on my original, I hole punched out a squirrel. And so we had to draw in, there should be 100 squirrels on there. So you have to draw in an extra um, colored in squirrel. All right, it's all dark world here. So this is the one I just drew right there. That's the one that got hole punched out. All right, so to get the right answer, that's what you have to do. Okay, so for those of you who haven't done, uh, the uh, frequency of the black phenotype, so that is, you, so for this, this is kind of like the flower example I did in the notes where we can tell the difference between the homozygous and heterozygous individuals. So um, and this is all the black, so therefore you count them up, you should have 75 out of the 100, or 0.75 would be the frequency. And then the gray is the white, and that would be 25 out of the 100, or 0.25. Then the frequency of the big B, big B genotype, uh, <coughs> you can just count them all up. Um, they are denoted underneath it, and you should have 25 out of 100, or 0.25. Then 50 of them, the rest of the 50 of the 100 are big B, little b, so that's 0.5, that's the frequency. Frequency, remember, is always in decimal format. And then the little b, little b is all the not colored in, which represents in this example the gray. And so little b, little b is 25 out of 100, which gives you 0.25. And so those are your frequencies. And then, on the frequency of the big B and the little B genes, and we know everybody's genotype for sure. So there are 100 squirrels here, so how many total <coughs> alleles in the squirrel population? 200, right? And you should have counted that there are 100 out of the 200 that are big B, which gives you a frequency of 0.5, and the same thing for the little B, all right? So this is, again, kind of like that, that like I said, that um, flower population where you know everybody's genotype in real life, you don't know everybody's genotype. People that are squirrels, in this case, that have the dominant trait can be big B, big B, or big B, little B. And so the only people or the only individuals that you know for sure are the recessive. And so therefore, the other problems here, that's what we look at is we look at the recessive individuals in the population first and try to work from that to find Q. And then if we find P, then we can do anything that the problem asks us to do. All right, so if you look at number one here, so it tells you the frequency of two alleles in a gene pool is 0.1 and 0.9. So 0.1 is the big A, so that's P is 0.1, Q is 0.9. And it asks you what is the percentage, so it's not the frequency, it's the percentage in the population of heterozygous individuals. So remember there are two Hardy-Weinberg equations, P plus Q equals one, and P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one. So you have to say, okay, well, uh, they gave me P and Q, they're asking me for heterozygous, so therefore 2PQ is the part of the Hardy-Weinberg equation I'm using. So I take 2 times 0.1 times 0.9, gives me 0.18. 0.18 would be the answer if the question was what's the frequency, but it asks you what's the percentage, so you have to multiply by 100 and it gives you 18. Number two, you have big B for white wool and um, little b for black wool. In an example of 900 sheep, 891 are white and 9 are black. 
estimate the genotype frequencies in the population, and then how many sheep are in each of these genotypes. So they give you the dominant and the recessive. I underline the recessive because that's why we, what we want to look at. We want to use the frequency of 9 out of 900 are black because black is the recessive phenotype. Can somebody tell me why I can't use 8, 891 out of 900 for anything? Why is that? that not helpful for us? Why, is, why can't I say, oh, 891 are white out of the, the 900 and use that frequency for something in the hardy weinberg equation? Felipe? Because it's p squared plus 2 pq. Yeah, that would be p squared plus 2 pq. What, what that means is the white, the white is dominant, remember? And by looking at the white sheep, you can't tell if they're big b, big b, or big b, little b. So within that 891 sheep, you have some that are big B, big B, but you have some little Bs in there for the individuals that are big B, little B. So we can't use that. We can't like take the square root of that or anything like that. So we always focus on the people, or in this case the sheep, that we know for sure, which are black, which are little B, little B. And then the next thing you have to do is say to yourself, well, what is that data that I'm given? Nine out of 900 are black or little b, little b. That is q squared. Remember, q squared is the frequency of the recessive genotype. So that's q squared. So then to figure out q, what you can do is take 9 out of 900, divide it out and take the square root, and then therefore get q, and q is 0.1 then, and then subtract that from 1 to get p is 0.9. So then from that, I ask you to estimate the genotype frequencies. So here are your three genotypes. So big b, big b is p squared. So now I know what p is, it's 0.9. We square it and that the frequency is 0.81. The um, rest of the question, the second part of the question after estimating the genotype frequencies is how many sheep are big b, big b out of that 900. So I take 0.81, multiply it by 900 and I get 729. Then big b, little b is 2 pq, so 2 times 0.9 times 0.1. And then you take that and multiply by 9, 100, or by, by 900, and then you get 162. And then lastly, little b, little b is q squared, 0.1 squared times it by one, uh, uh, your total, which is 900, and that's 9, which we already knew. All right, so they gave us that, but it just shows you that when you plug it into the equation, it still works. All right, and these guys all add up to 900. Any questions so far? All right, three, uh, the uh, allele big T is the ability to taste a particular chemical. That's dominant to the allele little t, the inability to taste it. So there are actually genetic traits like this that allow some people to taste certain things and other people not to. This ch these chemicals are in different foods. It's one of the reasons why certain people like certain foods and others don't like it, all right, if they can taste it or not taste it. At Cornell University, out of 400 surveyed students, 64 were found to be non-tasters. So non-tasters are little t, little t. How many students are heterozygous for this trait? So my stat that they give me is 64 out of 400 are little t, little t. That's the frequency of the recessive genotype. So that is q squared. So then you t square root of that and uh, to get q, and you should get that as 0.4, and then subtract that from 1 to get 0.6 for p. To figure out heterozygous individuals, you use 2pq, so 2 times 0.6 times 0.4 gives you 0.48. But it's not asking you the frequency, it's actually asking you how many students, so therefore 0.48 times your total number of kids, which is 400, and it gives you 150. Mm -hmm. Sounds good so far? All right, for those people who are here. Number four, Rh positive, this is um, the blood type, so A positive or A negative. Rh positive is a dominant gene, uh, big R, while Rh negative is recessive. If 84% <coughs> of the individuals are Rh positive, that means that that's dominant, so that means they're either big R, big R, or big R, little r. What are the frequencies of the alleles, big R and little r? So we're trying to find P and Q, and all they give you is that 84% of the individuals are Rh positive, <coughs> and we know that Rh positive is dominant. So therefore, we can't take, so the 84%, since they're um, all dominant, have some recessive genes in that, those carriers, those heterozygous individuals, 
So we can't use that, but if you know that 84% of the population is RH positive, do you know what percent are RH negative? Yes, because you just, the rest of the people would be RH negative. So we take, so we know then that 100% minus 84% uh, gives you 16% is RH negative, and that's recessive. Um, so those individuals are little r, little r. So to figure out, so, uh, so this is the genotype frequency, but this is in the percentage, so the frequency would be 0.16, because 16% is the same as 0.16. So Q squared would be 0.16. So then to find Q, you take the square root of that, which would be 0.4, subtract that from 1, and you get the Okay, so then we have the question.
to do this is once you give your given your genotype, remember that we are trying to simulate our Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. So one of the things in those five things is totally random mating. So therefore, you have to get up and move around and mingle and um, partner up with people, not just the people around you or your best friends or whoever, but but anybody, all right, around the room to be truly random. Okay, so that's thing one. Then when you find your partner, then what happens is, is that you're going to put your genotypes behind, your genotype behind your back. Because remember, this is simulating mating, and when you, so this is a particular trait. Remember, like in genetics, you give either, if I'm big A, little A, I'm going to either give the big A or the little A to my kid. It's totally a 50% chance. And so I want it to be random. That's the whole thing behind your back. All right, you flip one over, your partner's going to be doing the same thing at the same time, so they're going to flip one over, and let's say we have a big A, little A kid. Now, what, one of the lines I just remembered on here was, because uh, the copier, remember the copier is horrible, it, might, it doesn't copy one part of it, and it's in this, this paragraph down here, the last line where it says each couple, and it leaves you hanging, it's like each couple what? All right, so what, it, that, what you can't read there is each couple must have two offspring. All right, so you're having as many offspring, you're replacing yourselves, basically. So every couple is going to have two offspring. So I just partnered up with somebody, and we had a big A, little A kid. And so then we make a mental note, one of our kids is big A, little A. My partner takes their little A back. I'm still my big A, little A, because remember, just because you gave a, a big A to your kid, the, their first kid doesn't mean you're going to give the little A to your second kid. So therefore, you have, a, uh, you have to put them both behind your back again, have a second kid, and let's say we had a little A, little A kid. So we have a big A, little A kid and a little A, little A kid. So now we've done our part, but now we're going to go. To, we're going to start the next generation. For the next generation, each parent is going to assume the identity of one of their two kids. So me and my partner, we had a little A, little A kid. I said, okay, I'm, I'll become the little A, little A kid. We also had a big A, little A kid. My other partner, my partner is going to become big A, little A. All right, so we're each going to become one of our kids. Now the problem is, is I was big A, little A, and now I'm going to assume the identity of my little A, little A kid. And so therefore, I have to switch out. And so they're the cards. So I'm going to have two piles in the front here, these piles here, they're stock cards. So I'm, I'm going to become little A, little A. I put my big A down, and now I become little A, little A. All right? So, so I'm going to become the identity of one of my kids. Now, we have to do this systematically, meaning that we can't have, in order for this to work and to accurately compare the cases, we can't have some people in the F4 generation and some people in the F2 generation because then um, it skews our data. And so, so we have to do it systematically. So I will be the person that lets you know that you can go find another partner. So you just chill out, all right, until, because some people have to come up and switch their cards out and stuff. Some people won't and, and so on. So, so just chill out with your partner, your current partner, and then when I, I'll say, okay, we're ready for the F2, then you go find another partner. Now, resist the urge, because every year I have people that want to, they want to partner up. They just cannot wait to, to partner up with their next um, partner before everybody's done. And so don't do that, because what, what happens when that occurs is that then it becomes not truly random and you have just a small portion that's left not par partnered up and, um, and it can skew the data as well. And then I also have the people who don't physically partner up, so they'll stay. They think they're being slick. They stay with the person and they're like this. You know, like they're, they're like across the room picking their partners for the next time and it's obvious. <laughs> So, so just wait until and then find a new partner and move around. We're going to do that five times. So at the end of the fifth, eight, at the end of each round, you're going to write down the genotype of your new identity. So then, at the end of the fifth round, you may or may not be the same a genotype as you are um, at the beginning. So then we'll sit down, we'll get our data, and um, we can calculate and um, see if the Q changed or stayed the same. And then we'll do case two. All right, so that is that. So that's what we're going to do first thing tomorrow. Any questions on that? It's really fun. I really like doing it. All right, so get you up and moving around um, and so on. So we don't have enough time to start today. So um, and we have like seven people gone. So so we will do this.